Synopsis of the Seventh Tablet Returned to the Abzu, Adamu and Tiamat bear children. Earthlings proliferate working in the mines and as servants. In Lil's grandchildren, the twins Utu and Inanna are born. Anunnaki couples bear other offspring on Earth. Climate changes cause hardships on Earth and on Lamu. Nibiru's orbital nearing is accompanied by upheavals. Inki and Marduk explore the moon, find it inhospitable. Inki determines the constellations and celestial time. Bitter about his own fate, Inki promises supremacy to Marduk. Anu gives command of a new spaceport to Utu, not to Marduk. Inki encounters and mates with two earthling females. One bears a son, a Dapa, the other a daughter, Titi. Keeping his parenting a secret, Inki raises them as foundlings. Adapa, highly intelligent, becomes the first civilized man. Adapa and Titi mate, have two sons, Cain and Abel. To the Abzu, away from the Eden, let them be expelled. So did Enlil the command decree. From the Eden to the Abzu, Adamu and Tiamat were expelled. In an enclosure among the trees, Inki them placed. To know each other, he left them. With joy did Inki see what Ningazita had done come to be. With child, Tiamat was frolicking. Nimma came the birth giving to watch. A son and a daughter, twins to the earth beings, were born. With wonderment did Nimma and Inki watch the newborns. How they grew and developed was a marvel. Days were as months, months to earth years accumulated. By the time Adamu and Tiamat had other sons and daughters, the first ones were by themselves procreating. Before one shar of Nibiru had passed, the earthlings were proliferating. With understanding were the primitive workers endowed, of commandments they were comprehending. To be with the Anunnaki they were eager, for food rations they toiled well. Of heat and dust they did not complain, of backbreaking they did not grumble. Of the hardships of work the Anunnaki of the Abzu were relieved. The vital gold to Nibiru was coming. Nibiru's atmosphere was slowly healing. Earth mission to the satisfaction of all was proceeding. Among the Anunnaki, those who from heaven to earth came, there was also espousing and procreation. The sons of Enlil and Inki from sisters and half-sisters from healing heroines took spouses. To them on earth, sons and daughters were born. Though by the life cycles of Nibiru were they endowed, by earth's cycles were they quickened. Who on Nibiru in diapers would still be, on earth became a child. Who on Nibiru began to crawl when on earth born was running around. Special joy there was when to Nanar and Ningal twins were born. A daughter and a son they were, Inanna and Utu, by Ningal they were named. With them a third generation of Anunnaki on earth was present. For the offspring of the leaders tasks were allocated. Some olden chores were divided, easier among the offspring they were made. To the olden chores, new tasks were added. Upon the earth, the warmth was rising. Vegetation flourished. Wild creatures overran the land. The rains were heavier. Rivers were gushing. Abodes repairing needed. Upon the earth, the heat was increasing. The snow-white parts to water were melting. The bars of the seas, the oceans were not containing. From the depths of the earth, volcanoes were fire and brimstones belching. The grounds were trembling each time the earth was shaking. In the lower world, the snow-white hued place, the earth was grumbling. At the tip of the Abzu, Inki, a place for observing, established. To his son Nergal and his spouse Irish Kegel, command thereof he entrusted. A thing unknown, an untoward thing, thereunder is brewing, Nigal to his father Inki said. In Nibruki, the place of the bond heaven earth, in Lil the heavenly circuits was watching. By the means of the tablets of destinies, celestial motions he was comparing. There is turmoil in the heavens, in Lil to his brother Inki said. From the planet Lamu, the place of the way station, Marduk to Inki his father was complaining. Strong winds are disturbing, annoying dust storms they are raising. So Marduk to his father Inki words was beaming. In the hammered bracelet, turmoils are occurring. Upon the earth, brimstones from the skies were falling. Pitiless demons have it causing, violently the earth they approached. 
Into flaming fires in the skies they were bursting. In a clear day darkness they were causing with storms and evil winds they raged around. Like stony missiles the earth they were attacking. King Yu, Earth's moon, and Lamu, too, by these havocs were afflicted. The faces of all three with countless scars were covered. In Lil and Inki to Anu the king urgent words were beaming. Nibiru's savants they alerted. The earth and the moon and Lamu a calamity unknown are facing. From Nibiru the savants were responding. Their words the leader's hearts were not calming. In the heavens the family of the sun were taking stations. The celestials of whom earth is the seventh in a row were choosing places. In the heavens Nibiru was approaching. The sun's abode it was nearing. By the seven in a row arraigned was Nibiru distracted. The path through the hammered bracelet it was missing. From the bracelet bits and pieces it has been displacing. Bereft of the celestial bar, Lahamu and Mamu near the sun were crouching. In the heavens, Lahamu, her glorious dwelling place, was abandoning. Toward Nibiru, the heavenly king, she was attracted. A queen of heaven she wished to be. To quill her, Nibiru from the celestial deep, a monstrous demon made appear. A monster wants to Tiamat's host belonging, by the celestial battle fashioned. From the celestial deep made its way, by Nibiru was it from slumber awakened. From horizon to the midst of heaven like a flaming dragon it was stretched. One league was its head, fifty leagues in length it was, awesome was its tail. By day the skies of earth it darkened. By night upon the face of the moon a spell of darkness it cast. To her brothers, the celestials, Laha moved for help was calling. Who will the dragon obstruct? Who will stop and kill it? She was asking. Only valiant King Yu, once Tiamat's protector, stepped forward to respond. To intercept the dragon in its path, King Yu was making haste. Fierce was the encounter, a tempest of clouds upon King Yu was raised. By its foundations was King Yu shaken, from the impact did the moon quake and shake. Then the heavenly havoc was calmed. Nibiru to its distant abode in the deep was returning. Lahamu its dwelling place did not abandon. The stony missiles upon the earth and Lamu ceased their raining. Inki and Enlil with Marduk and Ninurta gathered a surveying of the havoc they undertook. The foundations of the earth Inki surveyed, of what its platforms had befallen he examined. The depths of the oceans he measured, in earth's far corners the mountains of gold and copper he scanned. Of the vital gold there will be no shortage, this was Inki saying. In the Eden, Ninurta was the surveyor, where mountains trembled and valleys shook. In his sky ship he soared and journeyed. The landing platform was intact. In the valleys of the north the early fiery liquids was pouring. So was Ninurta to his father Enlil telling. Sulfuric mist and bitumens he was discovering. On Lamu the atmosphere was damaged. Dust storms were with life and work interfering. So Marduk to Inki was saying, To earth return I wish, to his father he disclosed. Enlil to his olden plans betook himself. What cities and their task he planned he reconsidered. A chariot place in the Eden must be established, to the others he was saying. The olden designs of the layout on the crystal tablet to them he showed. The conveying from the landing place to the way station on Lamu is no longer certain. To soar toward Nibiru from earth we must be able, so was Enlil to them saying. For the count since the first splashdown, the count of eighty shars it was. Now this is the account of the journey to the moon by Inki and Marduk, and how Inki the three ways of heaven and the constellations determined. Let the place of the chariots near Bad Tibera, the metal city, be established. Therefrom let the gold from earth to Nibiru in the chariots directly be carried. So Ninurta of Bad Tibera, the commander to them words, was saying. Enlil, to the words of Ninurta, his son gave heed. Of his son's wisdom he was proud. To Anu, the king Enlil, the plan quickly conveyed. To him words he was saying. Let a place of celestial chariots in the Eden be established. Near the place where the gold ores are smelted and refined, let it be built. Let the pure gold in the chariots directly from earth to Nibiru be carried. Directly to earth from Nibiru let heroes and supplies be coming. Of great merit is the plan of my brother, Inki to their father Anu was saying. 
a great disadvantage in its core it is holding. The net pull of earth is than Lamuse much greater. To overcome in our powers shall be exhausted. Before there is rush to deciding, let us an alternative examine. Nearby the earth a companion it has, the moon it is. Smaller is its net pull, ascent and descent thereon little effort will require. Let us at a way station consider, let me and Marduk thereto journey. The two plans Anu the king before counselors and savants for considering presented. Let the moon be first examined, the king they did advise. Let the moon be first examined, Anu to Inki and Enlil the decision beamed. Inki was greatly joyed, the moon to him was always alluring. Whether somewhere waters it is hiding, what atmosphere it possesses he did always wonder. In sleepless nights its silvery cool disk with bewitchment he observed. It's waxing and waning, a game with the sun played, a wonder of wonders he deemed. What secrets from the beginning it held he wished to uncover. In a rocket ship did Inky and Marduk to the moon journey. Trice they the earth's companion encircled, the deep wound by the dragon calls they observed. By many hollows the handiwork of smashing demons was the moon's face marked. In a place of rolling hills they set the rocket ship down, in its midst they landed. From the place the earth they could observe and the expanse of the heavens. Eagles' helmets they had to don, the atmosphere was for breathing insufficient. With ease they walked about, in this and that direction they went. The evil dragon's handiwork was dryness and desolation. Unlike Lamu it is. For a way station, it is unsuitable to his father Marduk was saying. Let us abandon this place, let us to earth return. Do not be hasty, my son, so was Inky to Marduk saying. Are you not by the celestial dance of earth and moon and sun enchanted? Unobstructed from here is the viewing, the quarter of the sun is at hand. The earth like a globe in the void by nothing is hanging. With our instruments we can scan the distant heavens. The handiwork of the creator of all in this solitude we can admire. Let us stay, the circuits observe how the motion or how the moon circles the earth. How the earth its circuits around the sun is making. So Inky, by the sights agitated, to his son Marduk was saying. By his father's words Marduk was persuaded, in the rocket ship they made their dwelling. For one circuit of earth, for three circuits on the moon they remained. Its motions about the earth they measured, the duration of a month they calculated. For six circuits of earth, for twelve circuits about the sun, earth's year they measured. How the two were entwined, causing the luminaries to disappear, they recorded. Then to the sun's quarter they attention gave, the paths of Mamu and Lahamu they studied. With the earth and the moon, Lamu the sun's second quarter constituted. Six were the celestials of the lower waters, so was Inky to Marduk explaining. Six were the celestials of the upper waters, beyond the bar, the hammered bracelet they were. Anshar, Kishar, Anu, and Nudimud, Gaga, and Nibiru, these were the six others. Twelve were they in all, of twelve did the sun and its family make the count. Of the upheavals most recent, Marduk of his father was inquiring. Why have seven celestials in a row places taken? So was he, his father, asking. Their circuits about the sun, Inky then considered. Their grand band around the sun, their progenitor, Inky carefully observed. The positions of earth and moon therein on a chart Inky marked out. By the motions of Nibiru of the sun, not a descendant, the width of the great band he outlined. The way of Anu, the king, the name it Inky decided. In the expanse of the deep heavens the stars did father and son observe. By their proximities and groupings was Inky fascinated. By the circuit of the heavens from horizon to horizon he drew images of twelve constellations. In the great band, the way of Anu, one each with the sun's family of twelve he paired. To each one he designated a station by names they were to be called. Then in the heavens below the way of Anu Whence Nibiru the sun is approaching, a band like way he designed, the way of Inki he it designated. To it twelve constellation by their shapes he also allotted. The heavens above the way of Anu, the upper tier, the way of Enlil he called. Therein too the stars into twelve constellations he assembled. 
36 were the star's constellations in the three ways where they located. So will the Earth's position designate it as around the sun it travels? The start of the cycle of celestial time the measure Inky to Marduk indicated. When on Earth I had arrived, the station that was ending by me, the station of the fishes, was named. The one that followed after my name title, he of the water, I called. So Inky with satisfaction and pride to his son Marduk was saying, your wisdom the heavens embraces, your teachings any own understanding extend. But on earth and on Nibiru, knowledge and rulership are separated. So did Marduk to his father say, My son, my son, what is that you do not know? What is it that you are missing? To him Inky was saying, The secrets of the heavens, the secrets of the earth with you have I shared. Alas, my father, Marduk was saying, there was agony in his voice. When the Anunnaki in the Abzu the toil ceased and the primitive worker you set to fashion, not my mother, but Ninma, the mother of Ninurta, to assist you was summoned. Not I, but Ningazita of me the younger, to help you was invited. With them, not with me, your knowledge of life and death did you share. My son, Inki to Marduk responded, to you command was given of the Igigi and Lamu to be supreme. Alas, my father, to him Marduk was saying, of supremacy might by fate we are deprived. You, my father, are Anu's firstborn, yet in Lil, not you, is the legal heir. You, my father, were first to splash down, and Iridu to establish. Yet Iridu is in Enlil's domain, yours is in the distant Abzu. I am your firstborn by your legitimate spouse on Nibiru was I born. Yet the gold in the city of Ninurta is assembled therefrom to send or to withhold. The survival of Nibiru is in his hands, in my hands it is not. Now to earth we are returning, what will my task be? Am I to fame and kingship fated, or again to humiliated be? In silence did Inky embrace his son, on the desolate moon to him a promise made. Of that of which I have been deprived, your future lot shall be. Your celestial time will come, a station mine and adjoining yours shall be. Now this is the account of Sipper, the place of the chariots in the Eden, and how the primitive workers to the Eden were returned. For many circuits of the earth, from the earth were father and son absent. On earth no plans were implemented, on Lamu the Igigi were in turmoil. Enlil to Anu secret words conveyed, his concerns to Anu he from Nibruki beamed. Inki and Marduk to the moon have gone, for countless circuits there they are staying. Their doings a mystery are, what they are scheming it is not known. Marduk, the way station on Lamu, has abandoned, the Igigi are agog. By dust storms has the way station been affected, what damage there is to us is not known. The place of the chariots in the Eden must be established. Therefrom the gold directly from earth to Nibiru to be carried. No way station on Lamu shall henceforth be needed. The plan of Ninurta it is. Great in these matters is his understanding. Let him the place of the chariots near Bad Tibera establish. Let Ninurta be its first commander. Anu to the words of Enlil gave much consideration. To Enlil a response he gave. Inki and Marduk to earth are returning. What about the moon they have found? Let us first to their words listen. From the moon Inki and Marduk departed, to earth they did return. Of conditions thereon they gave account. A way station is unfeasible now, so they reported. Let the place of the chariots be built, Anu was saying. Let Marduk be its commander, Inki was saying to Anu. The task is for Ninurta set aside, Enlil with anger shouted. For the Igigi command is no more needed of the task Marduk knowledge has. Of the gateway to heaven let Marduk be in charge, so did Enlil to his father say. Anu the matter with concern contemplated. Rivalries now the sons have affected. With wisdom was Anu endowed, with wisdom were his decisions. The place of the chariots for new ways the gold to handle is designated. Let us what henceforth comes in the hands of a new generation place. Neither Enlil nor Inki, neither Ninurta nor Marduk in command shall be. Let the third generation responsibility undertake. Let Utu be the commander. 
Let the place of the celestial chariots be built. Let Sippar Bird City be its name. This was the word of Anu. Unalterable was the word of the king. In the 81st Shar was the construction started. The plans of Enlil it followed. Nebruki was in the center, a navel of the earth by Enlil it was designated. As on circles, by their place and distances, the olden cities were located. Like an arrow from the lower sea toward the mountains pointing, they were arrayed. A line on the twin peaks of Arata to the skies in the north reaching, he drew. Where the pointing arrow, the Arata line, intersected, the place for Sipper, the earth's place of the chariots, he marked out. To it, the arrow directly led, it from Nibruki, was by an equal circle precisely located. Ingenious was the plan, by its precision all were made to wonder. In the 82nd Shar was the construction of Sipper completed. To the hero Utu of Enlil the grandson, its command was given. An eagle's helmet for him was fashioned, with eagle's wings was he decorated. In the first chariot from Nibiru to Sipper directly come, Anu was traveling. To view for himself the installations he desired, to marvel at what was attained he wanted. For the occasion the Igigi by Marduk commanded from Lamu to earth came down. From the landing place and from the Abzu Anunnaki were assembled. There was backslapping and hailing, a feast and a celebration. For Anu, Mana in Lil's granddaughter singing and dancing presented. With affection Anu kissed her. Anu Nitu, Anu's beloved, he fondly called her. Before departing, Anu, the heroes and heroines assembled. A new era has begun, so was he to them saying. Supplied directly with the golden salvation forthcoming is the end of toil. Once enough gold on the Biru for protecting is piled in storage, the toil on earth can be diminished. Heroes and heroines to Nibiru will return. Thus did Anu, the king to the assembled, promise. A great hope to them he did extend. A few more shars of toil, and homeward they shall be bound. With much pomp did Anu to Nibiru soar back. Gold, pure gold, with him was carried. His new task, Utu, with Cherish performed. Ninurta of Bad Tibera command retained. Marduk to Lamu did not return. With his father to the Abzu he did not go. Over all the lands he wished to roam, in his skyship the earth to comprehend. Of the Igigi, some on Lamu, some on earth, Utu was the commander made. After Anu to Nibiru returned, on earth the leader's great expectations had. With renewed vigor to labor, the Anunnaki they expected. Gold quickly to amass, thereby quicker homebound to be. That, alas, was not what came to pass. In the Abzu, relief, not continued toil, was the Anunnaki's expectation. Now that the earthlings are proliferating, let them provide the labor. So were the Anunnaki in the Abzu's saying. In the Eden, the tasks were greater, more abodes, more provisions were required. For primitive workers to the Absu confined did the Eden heroes clamor. For forty shars was relief only to the Absu provided. The heroes in the Eden shouted, Our toil has increased beyond endurance, let us have the workers too. While Enlil and Inki the matter were debating, Ninurta the decision into his hands took. With fifty heroes, an expedition to the Abzu he led, with weapons were they armed. In the forest and the steps of the Abzu, the earthlings they chased. With nets, they them captured, male and female, to the Eden, they them brought. To do all manners of chores, in the orchards and in the cities, they trained them. By the doings was Inky angered, by them was Enlil enraged. By expelling of Adamu and Tiamat, you have overturned, so Enlil to Ninurta said. Let the mutiny once in the Abzu occurring, not in the Eden, be repeated. So to Enlil, Ninurta said, With the earthlings in the Eden, the heroes are bec becalmed. A few more shars, and it will no longer matter, so did Ninurta to Enlil say. Enlil was not appeased. With grumbling, let it so be, to his son, he said. Let the gold pile up quickly. Let us all to Nibiru soon return. In the Eden, the Anunnaki, the earthlings with admiration, observed. Intelligence they possessed, of commands they had understanding. They took over all manner of chores, unclothed they were, the task performing. Males with females among them were constantly mating, quick were their proliferations. In one shar, sometimes four, sometimes more, were their generations. As the earthlings grew in numbers, workers the Anunnaki had. 
With food, the Anunnaki were not satiated. In the cities and in the orchard, in the valleys and in the hills, the earthlings for food were constantly foraging. In those days, grains had not yet been brought forth. There was no ewe, a lamb had not yet been fashioned. About these matters Enlil to Inky angry words was saying, By your doings confusion was created, by you let salvation be devised. Now this is the account of how civilized man was brought about. How by a secret of Inky, Adapa and Titi in the Eden were brought forth. By the proliferation of the earthlings Inky was pleased, Inky was worried. The lot of the Anunnaki was greatly eased. Their discontent was diminished. By the proliferation, the Anunnaki shunned toil. The workers as serfs were becoming. For seven shars, the Anunnaki's lot was greatly eased. Diminished was their discontent. By the proliferation of the earthlings, what by itself was growing for all insufficient was. In three more shars of fish and fowl, there was a shortage. What by itself grows Anunnaki and earthlings did not satiate. In his heart, Inky, a new undertaking, was scheming to create a civilized mankind in his heart he conceived. Grains that are sown by them to be cultivated, ewes that become sheep, let them shepherd. In his heart, Inky, a new undertaking, was scheming how this to attain he contemplated. The primitive workers in the Abzu he for this scheme observed. The earthlings in the Eden, in the cities, and in the orchards he considered. What could for the task make them suited? What by the life essence has not been combined? The offspring of the earthlings he observed, an alarming matter he noticed. By their repeated copulations back toward their wild forebears they were degraded. Inky in the marshlands looked about, on the rivers he sailed and observed. With him was only Izamud, his vizier, whose secrets kept. On the river's bank, bathing and frolicking earthlings he noticed. Two females among them were wild with beauty, firm were their breasts. Their sight, the phallus of Inky, calls to water. A burning desire he had. Shall I not kiss the young ones? Inky, his vizier Izumud, was asking. I, the boat, will hither row, kiss the young ones, Izumud to Inky was saying. The boat, thereto, Izumud directed. From the boat to dry land, Inky stepped. A young one to him, Inky called. A tree fruit she to him offered. Inky bent down, the young one lie embraced, on her lips he kissed her. Sweet were her lips, firm with ripeness were her breast. Into her womb he poured his semen, in a mating he knew her. Into her womb she took the holy semen, by the semen of the Lord Inky she was impregnated. The second young one to him Inky called, berries from the field she him offered. Inky bent down, the young one he embraced, on her lips he kissed her. Sweet were her lips, firm with ripeness were her breast. Into her womb he poured his semen, in a mating he knew her. Into her womb she took the holy semen, by the semen of the Lord Inky she was impregnated. With the young one's stay, whether pregnancies come about ascertain, so was Inky to his vizier Izamud saying. Izamud by the young one sat down, by the fourth count their bulges appeared, by the tenth count the ninth having been completed, the first young one squatted and birth gave. By her a male child was born. The second young one squatted and birth gave. By her a female child was born. At dawn and dusk, which a day delimit, on the same day the two were born. The gracious ones, dawn and dusk, thereafter in legends they were known. In the ninety-third shar, the two, by Inky fathered, in the Eden were born. Word of the births is a mood to Inky quickly brought. By the births, Inky was ecstatic. Whoever such a thing has ever known. Between Anunnaki and Earthling, conception was attained. Civilized man I have brought into being. To his vizier, Izumud, Inky instructions gave. A secret must my deed remain. Let the newborns by their mothers be suckled. Thereafter into my household them bring. Among the bulrushes and reed baskets have I them found. Thus to all ye will say. By their mothers were the newborns suckled and nurtured. To Inky's household in Iridu thereafter Izumud them brought. Among the bulrushes in reed baskets have I them found, so did Izumud to all say. Ninki to the foundlings a liking took, as her own children she raised them. Adapa, the foundling, the boy she called. Titi, one with life, the girl she named. 
Unlike all other earthling children, the Tusum were slower to grow up than earthlings they were, much quicker in understanding they were, with intelligence they were endowed, of speaking with words capable they were. Beautiful and pleasant was the girl, with her hands she was greatly dexterous. Ninki, the spouse of Inki, to Titi took a liking. All manner of crafts she was her teaching. To Adapa, Inki himself teachings gave. How to keep records he was him instructing. The achievements with pride Inki to Izumud was showing. A civilized man have I brought forth to Izumud, he was saying. A new kind of earthling from my seed has been created in my image and after my likeness. From seed they food will grow, from ewes sheep they will shepherd. Anunnaki and earthlings henceforth shall be satiated. To his brother Enlil, Inki word sent. From Nibruki to Iridu, Enlil came. In the wilderness a new kind of earthling has come forth to Enlil, was Inki saying. Quick of learning they are, knowledge and craft work to them can be taught. Let us from Nibiru seeds that are sown bring down. Let us from Nibiru use that sheep become to earth deliver. Let us the new breed of earthlings farming and shepherding teach. Let Anunnaki and earthlings together satiated be. So was Inki to Enlil saying. Akin to us Anunnaki in many ways, indeed they are, Enlil to his brother said. A wonder of wonders it is, in the wilderness by themselves to have come about. Izumud was summoned. Among the bulrushes and reeds, baskets I them found, he said. Enlil, the matter with graveness pondered, with amazement his head he shook. Indeed, a wonder of wonders it is. A new breed of earthling on earth has emerged. A civilized man has the earth itself brought forth. Farming and shepherding, crafts and tool-making, he can be taught. So was Enlil to Inki, saying, Let us of the new breed to Anu word send. Of the new breed, word to Anu on Nibiru was beamed. Let seeds that can be sown, let ewes that sheep become to earth be sent. So did Inki and Enlil to Anu the suggestion make. By civilized man, let Anunnaki and earthlings become satiated. Anu the words heard, by the words he was amazed. That by life essences one kind to another leads is not unheard of to them words back he sent. That on earth a civilized man from the Adamu so quickly appeared, that is unheard of. For sowing and husbanding great numbers are needed, perchance the beings to proliferate are unable. While the savants on the Biru the matter contemplated, in Iridu occurrences of import took place. A dappa and a mating, T.T. knew, into her womb he poured his semen. There was conception, there was birth giving. Two twins, two brothers, T.T. gave birth. Word of the birth to Anu on Nibiru was beamed. The twosome for conception are compatible, proliferation by them can occur. Let seeds that are sown use that sheep become to earth be delivered. Let on earth farming and shepherding begin. Let us all be satiated. So did Inki and Enlil to Anu on the Biru say. Let Titi and Iridu remain, the newborns to suckle and nurture. Let Adapa, the earthling, to Nibiru be brought. So did Anu his de decision declare. Mm -hmm.